Okay, gang, this is old grandpa. And uh, today I'm going to be uh, discussing this uh, subject right here. 102 inch whip, a quarter wave radiator. It's a little project I did using modeling at uh, 27205 megahertz, the middle of the CV band, for a quarter wave uh, 102 inch whip. And the controversy over the need for a 108 inch whip. 102 is for 10 meters, 180 inches for CB, and the uh, discussions that go on about it. This is just a modeling effort on my part to uh, prove some issues. And all I've done is uh, taken uh, 108 inch whip and, this, and created 10 models here that represent different varieties and combinations of uh, the use of 108 and 102. Or, in the case of a radiator, when I tuned the model, I might end up with a radiator different just to get resonance, which you'll see in model number one and in model number uh, model number six. I tried to do it, but I found out 102 and 102 worked out just fine. Uh, let me describe what I've got here, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I've got uh, radials in the, under this first column. Uh, in, in all cases, there are uh, four radials, or one radio, or no radials. And uh, the S out here at the end of the radials, in this case, four 180-inch radials. S means they're slanted down. H means they're horizontal. And it's the only two varieties I use, other than no radials at all. I gave you a model of a no radial quarter-wave antenna just to see how bad of a match that uh, you you wouldn't even imagine uh, how bad it can be. I'm sure I've heard, I know I've heard many stories about people using them and uh, saying they work fine. Well, they might work fine. I don't have any argument about that. I hadn't tested it yet, but I know their matches. No match at all. NM means no match. That right there is a greater than 100 means SWR is greater than 100 to 1. All right, the 10 models right here. First model is a, is a baseline model using 480 inch whips. And I ended up tuning this one to get a good match, a value for R and a value for X, which is the reactance and the resistance. And it gave me a SWR 1.02. And I ended up with 100.9 inches of radiator to do that. And, uh, I consider that a resonant match antenna. Out there, right at the bottom of this form, you'll see all these little codes that I use to identify stuff over here, over here, or all down here, so you don't have to wonder. Okay, I'm going to rush on through this because uh, I don't have much time. Uh, number one and number six are baseline models. They're both Almost perfect uh, antennas for resonance and uh, mat resistance. Uh, the two, three, four, five, and seven are a mix match, mix and match of either 108 or 102, or some version thereof. 108 and 108 here, 108 here and 102 here, and down here it's 102 over here and 108 over here. So it's just a, a mix of the di different iterations that I used to uh, to create a model and just show you what results I got. That's I did all I did is just put the data in for these models and there's the results. Number one, uh, I tuned. Number one, I tuned. Number six worked out just like I built it as 102 and 100 using 102 inch whips. Just to show you all that you can make. Uh, 102 inch whip work in 11 meters, which everybody says, oh, you gotta add a spring or a spacer or something like that and get it out there 108 inches long or before it'll work because 102 inches for 10 meters. Well, uh, this modeling don't prove that. All right, number eight. As a matter of fact, I used a 108 inch radiator under the radiator column here. 108 inch radiator and I added 5% to it to get 113.4, which which uh, theory uh, 
uh, predicts for us, uh, we should use 5% longer radials than, than our radiator. And I'll just show you what kind of match that produced. And number nine, it's the same as number eight, except all I did is I took the model down to uh, a frequency where I found resonance, and I moved it to all the way down to 26.5 and found resonance down there. That was part of the discussion that Shockwave and I had about a claim he made in this thread on 102-inch uh, whips. Uh, somewhere on uh, www.rf.com. Uh, uh, I'm a, a worldwide dx.com. Number 10 is pertaining to a uh, current thread going on about top hats. So I just threw in a top hat model here just to show you what modeling sh says about a top hat relative to all these other models of quarter wave antennas. Sort of like the Merlin. Sort of like the Merlin without the coil. This does need a coil because you can see right here that the coil is going to up the uh, the uh, re resistance up maybe closer to 50 ohms to still and still maintain hopefully maintain resonance. I don't know what the Merlin does, but I would suspect that's what the coil is there for to boost this uh, <coughs> 39 ohms of resistance up, get a little bit better match. Whether it adds anything to the antenna, I couldn't tell you. But at any rate, uh, what I've got below here now is each one of these models that shows a pattern. The max. Oh yeah, I didn't 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 explain this to you. What are these? Maximum and minimum. That's the maximum gain and the angle of that gain for the maximum lobe. And you'll see that on the pattern. And I also show the minimum. I do not. I did not show y'all. Uh, a, a, a pattern model uh, with the minimum highlighted. So only the maximums are highlighted. And you'll see that in a minute. But they're all right here on this list. Here's the value for R, the resistance. Here's the value for X, the reactance. Shows a plus if it's uh, inductive and it shows it a minus if it's, uh, if it's uh, capacitive. And then the SWR and then my results coded over here, which are noted right down here. Okay, let's go on to a model here, and we'll just demonstrate. This is model number one. The description is up above, and here's the result. The maximum right here is my cursor. You can see that on the screen, too, uh, uh, the little hand there. There's the cursor. shows the maximum angle. Here's the maximum angle right down here. 32 degrees, 3.79. And then, uh, then the next screen shows the source code for this antenna. And on this particular one, it shows 51.02. And it, uh, the uh, value of the reactance is less than 1 ohms, which is uh, very good. Uh, these numbers right here will be up here on this list. Right here. 51.02 and less than 1 right here. That's the way it works. All the way through. Just keep on going down. Keep on going down. You'll see every model demonstrated there with a pattern that it creates. Different patterns that it creates. And the source code that it generates. Okay? We get down here onto the something that I want to show you on the uh, on the top one as a matter of fact. Before I run out of time here, it's number 10. There, I'll show you a picture of the antenna here. Could have showed you all of them, but that's just more stuff to put in this PDF file. Uh, but uh, just wanted to show you this top hat uh, antenna with slanted down radials. And here's the pattern it makes. And I want you all to, when you all looking through this stuff, I want you all to notice these lobes right here. These lobes are the ones that work for us here. These are the ones that are really wasted over here. This is dubious value here, but this is really wasted over here. And you notice this top hat pattern. If you'll, if you'll compare this with all those up above, you'll find that there's very little 
waste in this top hat antenna that is short and radiant. If there's any benefit that these guys that build in these type of antennas are talking about, this is along the lines with what they're talking about. They might not be able to actually show a big gain number out here, but as you can bet your booty that as long as these are small, the, the RF that goes up into some of those that are big, like that, that are bigger, that like that one there, and even some that are much bigger, like that one there, and they're getting bigger as we go up, that one there, and that one there, and we, you'll, we'll find one here in a minute that's really big. Look at there. The, the RF that's wasted in there is not going in this area where it's useful to us. That's what y'all need to focus on. And this helps explain, maybe helps explain, what th these guys that manufacture these top hat mobile antennas are trying to get over to y'all that y'all are not appreciating. Now whether it makes any real difference in the real world is dubious. I personally in my testing, with my real testing that I do, my signal reports, I find my uh, top hat uh, astroplane uh, is uh, uh, just on par with the uh, same uh, antenna, similar antenna as the astroplane with the straight quarter full wave quarter wave radio uh, radiator in the antenna. Uh, so it's not showing a big benefit, but it's uh, a four foot radiator compared to a eight or nine foot radiator, and it does about the same. Uh, it's about is about as effective, maybe even has some advantages. I'll go into that later. Okay, I'm going to check this and see. I'm about 12 minutes and that's too much. So i got to go, gang. Uh, I might not get this on YouTube. So at any rate, take care and uh, thanks for checking with me. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave me a comment uh, on YouTube or uh, uh, leave a comment on the, on the forum. Okay, so Grandpa Carpus Christi. Broadcasting live and in color on your two-way. We'll see you.